Right, welcome to the channel. We're going to talk about uh, Alter Carbon Season 2. I've watched it all, so this is my review. Uh, we're going to predominantly talk non-spoilers, and then I'll touch on some spoilers at the end with fair warning, so don't worry. Um, I, yeah, I really like this season. I thought it was fantastic. I really, really, really liked the first Altered Carbon. Uh, I think it's, it's interesting because it came out at a time when uh, I think Blade Runner 2049 was out in the same year or within like a certain amount of time. And it was very interesting to kind of see the, the difference between these universes and what could have been received uh, from Blade Runner 2049 to Altered Carbon. But anyway, back to Altered Carbon, just a bit of a backstory as to how much I did enjoy the first season. I really, really liked this season. Uh, it's only eight episodes, whereas the first one was 10. So they chopped it off by two episodes. And I think predominantly, from what I could see, is because there was a little bit more effects work in this season. Maybe. I don't know. It's just a guess. Um, but I, I don't think the story suffered as a result of the the kind of season um, episode decline. Obviously, first things first, uh, Anthony Mackie in the role, because of course Joel Kinnaman was in the role of Takashi, to, to, Takashi uh, Kovac, uh, Kovac. I always say Kovacs. I want to say Kovacs, but it's not as Kovac. Um, he was really good in this. He was fantastic. And I was a little bit concerned because Anthony Mackie, he, he's, he, he can be hit or miss as an actor, right? Um, in my eyes, anyway. But he was fantastic in this role. Really, really, really good. And boy, did he get jacked for this role. Uh, more so than he did for Pain and Gain, which I think is funny. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Pain and Gain, great movie with The Rock, Mark Wahlberg, Anthony Mackie, bodybuilders. Um, but Anthony Mackie was more jacked in this. And kudos to him for actually getting in shape and, and kind of uh, living up to the role that he needed to do. Um, big shoes to fill, I think, from Joel Kinnaman, who, who was quite ripped uh, in, in the first season. But anyway, I digress. He was really good in this. And the way a lot of people probably have some aspersions to that, because Joel Kinnaman owned Alter Carbon Season 1. He owned it, and he was the face of it. He sold it. He was really good. Uh, for me, that's the that, that's the only role that I like him in. That and another, like a police detective drama on Netflix. Um, those are the two roles that I like Joel Kinnaman in. Joel Kinnaman is Alter Carbon, well, as much as now Anthony Mackie is. And the way they introduced Anthony Mackie in the first episode, because of course, for anyone that has forgotten. Uh, Takashi Kovacs was uh, re-sleeved at the end of season one, so he was he was obviously going to be in a different skin. There's nothing wrong with them changing the actors out, and I actually really like the fact that they're changing the actors out. Um, I think you it opens the world to so many more possibilities. I mean, this is a world where you can do anything because you can re-sleeve, right? So the fact that they're swapping uh, actors out for different people per season, um, which is their intended plan, by the way. There's no, that's not a spoiler. It is literally the plan. It's what they've said many, many times. I like that approach. And I really hope they get a season three and I really hope they continue down this path. But Anthony Mackie owns the role. He is fantastic. If they get another person on par with Anthony Mackie, right, you, you've you've sold it. You That's great. You score a hat trick. Great stuff. Now, there are a few uh, other people which were in this show which were stand out. Uh, and I really do mean stand out. So we had the return of Poe, Chris Connor as Poe. And we ha were introduced to a new dy uh, dynamic between uh, Takashi Kovacs and Poe. A brand new dynamic. Um, it, it's something, it's a natural progression from the first season. It's a, it is absolutely a natural progression. It's what you'd have expected to happen, but it is still a new dynamic and it's an evolution. Really, really nice, sincere, heartfelt. Um, I felt it. Like, the thing about this particular season, obviously the first season had it as well, but this season really played on, um, it, it was basically morality, humanity, what makes you a man, not not a man, but, you know, a human, um, and and really, you know, can we overcome our past to live a better future, and things like this, which is kind of, it's a running theme in Altered Carbon, because obviously, first season, Takashi Kovacs' sister, and things like that, so it is still there, like, it's something which they've carried over from the first season, but I think it, it really did play up a lot more in this one, but to such a better degree, Poe, in this, 
is is really like such a new role for Chris Connor in this season. And again, this is the beauty of this show. Obviously, we're only two seasons in, but if they do it again for season three, you know exactly. Well, you don't know the direction they're going in because they change it each and every episode uh, season, but you know that that's their intention. And that's great. For the range for these uh, characters to go through, that's awesome. It keeps you invested. It keeps you engaged. It was a heartfelt show. Um, so I, I, I tweeted uh, my kind of first reactions and stuff like that. Uh, I tweeted first and foremost that the... Or, or, follow me on Twitter, Mr. Age Reviews. The first episode had such a good pace right now obviously jarring to see a new person in the role of Takashi Kovacs right so the first episode throws you right into the deep end and it has to because obviously you've got a brand new actor in the role of Takashi Kovacs and I will say actually there was some surprise um there were some, some surprise bodies out there uh, for Takeshi Kovacs. And I think they did it in such a great way. The first episode really sets the scene. And because it is so engaging and so brisk on the pace, I, I thought, anyway, um, you really do get a sense and a feel for this new Anthony Mackie Takashi. And I think that was the best way forward. It was really, 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 really good. Um, so outside of that, it was brisk pace, great action. The, the action was actually really, really, really good. There was some dodgy camera work here and there, but I think it was on par with the first one. Obviously, I haven't gone back to rewatch the first season before watching this one. Um, but there were some Dutch angles, but it works in show. Just don't don't make a habit of it and don't please let's not start this a new trend in Hollywood of doing Dutch angles everywhere else. Dutch angle is just like a diagonal shot, weird. Anyway, there were some Dutch angles and stuff, but it works for this show, to be fair. Uh, and and at some of the action shots. And part of the narrative of this show does almost remind me of Matrix. And it's... I don't know if anyone else will agree with me, but it's because it's at the forefront of my mind because I've been covering Matrix 4. Um, but there is there is the same kind of themes running through this show. Some of the action is very similar as well. You know, they run up walls and they bounce off one another because obviously they're the envoys and stuff like this. So it is... It's part and parcel of it. Now, uh, we had Simone Missick as Trep. This is a brand new character for this season. She was great. I actually really enjoyed her. She's a bounty hunter. Um, I enjoyed the sass that she gave. I enjoyed the fact that she, uh, you know, her backstory and and what that meant for the implication of the show, but, well, for Anthony Mackie's Takashi and, and how it spun the narrative in kind of a circle and stuff like that. I really enjoyed that. I thought she was a good addition. Now, we obviously had Renee Elise Gold, uh, Goldsbury back as Kelchrist Falconer. I, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this character, and she was at the forefront of this season. I really like her, but I, I prefer her in smaller bites. Um, and I don't know whether it's the actor or it's the character. Uh, so, take from that what you will. But, again, it, it's not a case of, oh, women this and women that. Because Simone uh, Missick was literally front and centre uh, in this season. She was great. I think, to be fair, I think it's how the actress of... Uh, Kelcrest Kel Falconer portrays the role. I just a love hate relationship. I, I quite like her, but mm, I prefer a little bit less of her. So that was kind of my only downside to this season. And I will say as well, uh, season one had a really good soundtrack. I feel this season didn't put nearly as much effort in the score as season one did. And that's a very minor gripe because I love this season, but it's just a very minor gripe. I think season one had a better score. It really worked in a good soundtrack for the season. And it, and it worked. It was great. But I think also, in fairness, we're on a different planet in this season. Not a spoiler. Um, so it is different tones. Uh, and whereas in the first season, where it was much more Blade Runner-esque, kind of retro synthwave, stuff like this, to not get that in the season two, it's not a surprise. But I feel the score was lacking as a result of that. Now, we had Torben Leibrecht. Butchered that name. German actor. He was great. Not going to tell you who he was playing. I can't because that is a spoiler. But he was fantastic. And for those people that will see him initially, and maybe you're watching this review before you've watched the show, bear in there. Hang in there with his character because he gets better. His opening, I thought it was a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a bitch, a bit of a pussy. Um, but he, he actually he went well into his own and I really liked him. So hang in there with that character because he gets so much better as the season progresses. And again, you kind of grow with him. 
Uh, and it is, it's really, really, really good. So yeah, hang hang in there with, with that character. So there's not really that much else to say, to be fair. The effects were absolutely fantastic. And uh, I watched this on quite a big screen, high resolution, uh, high quality. It was very, very good effects. There's nothing really that I could pick up on that I, I really have any issues with at all. You may have some suspension of disbelief over some effects and things like that, but it doesn't look, to me, out of place for the in-universe, and that's the important thing. Uh, effects can look uncanny valley and they can look a little bit unrealistic, but if they fit the tone of the universe, then it's passable, um, because it's believable within the realms of what they've established, um, tone, aesthetics, and such and such forth. So I really liked that. I've got no qualms about any of the effects work at all, in fact. I really, really enjoyed that. Now, um, I, I don't do ratings out of 10. I highly recommend you go out and watch this. I stayed up until 5 a.m. watching this season to review for you guys. And I'm about to go out and watch uh, Invisible Man to review for you guys. I'm a little bit tired. But the fact that I stayed up, and I didn't have to because some, some of these seasons I don't stay up to. I just kind of watch leisurely and do a review whenever. I was engaged. I was really enthralled by this season. It was it was fantastic. I, I don't know anything about the books, okay? So I'm literally coming from the most unbiased view as possible from the perspective of I'm just watching it as the media that it is produced. Um, I do know, and we'll touch mildly on spoilers now, so here's your spoiler warning. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, the Elders come into this season, okay? V minor-ish, we're just exploring it a little bit. Now, for those that don't know, the Elders are an alien race uh, that essentially all the technology in this universe stems from. Not all of it, obviously, interstellar travel and things like that. No, we created that. Uh, but the stack technology comes from the Elders. And I'm sure a lot of people have an issue with the fact that they're only just being introduced. I'll stop you there. I don't think you could have introduced something so wild and outlandish with a, along with everything else in the first season and for it to to, to be as received uh, as well as it was. I think, I think the pace and the structure of the narrative that they're telling and the way that they are, I think it absolutely works. And I will say this, this is a perfect example, right, of how to do a show. These episodes, if you take out the intro and the recap and things like that, they're about 45 minutes long, okay? Now, if we compare that to the likes of Picard, which is now six episodes in and nothing has happened, you really do know how well, I'm not going to shit on Picard, but you really do know how well Alter Carbon uh, Season 2 and Season 1 writers have gone about this. It's fantastic. They've managed to tell such a great story in such a limited time, because eight episodes is not a lot, but it, it works. There are first, second, and third acts every single episode, right? But there's story beats that progress and move every single episode, and it's not just a procedural. It's a fantastic show. I loved it, and I cannot wait. I cannot wait for the next season. Lo absolutely, bring it on. Bring it on. And I will say... It's, it's a shame that uh, Anthony Mackie won't be... Well, maybe not be back. Yeah, spoilers. We're in spoilers. It's a shame that he won't be back. Um, but that, again, it's not really a spoiler. They have every intention of just bringing out new actors each and every time. But I'm, as much as it's a shame to not see him and Joel Kinnaman back, um, it will be interesting to see who they cast, and I'm looking forward to it. And also, because of the technology, cloning sleeves and stuff like that, they can bring him back. It doesn't matter. It, they brought back the original actor that played uh, Takashi Kovacs. Anyway, so bring him back. Who cares? So good. Loved it. Anyway, if you've seen it, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Uh, if you're new here, do hit subscribe. Step to date on the world of pop culture movie news by hitting the bell notification icon. Thank you so much. I've missed H. Take care.